this International Holocaust Remembrance Day, we reflect on the six million Jews who died at the hands of the Nazis during World War II. One new documentary, however, focuses on life in one small village in Poland before the German invasion, before Jews were rounded up and sent to camps. The story starts in Florida in 2009 when Glenn Kurtz found an old 16 millimeter film that his late grandfather had taken during a trip to Poland in 1938. Three minutes of that film had survived, and it shows the daily life for Jews in that village. Those remarkable 180 seconds are the centerpiece of three minutes, a lengthening, which just played at the Sundance Film Festival after playing festivals in the U.S. and abroad as well. Joining me now are filmmaker Bianca Sitker and film subject Glenn Kurtz. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. So, Glenn, starting with you, you found this film in your parents' closet, and that really set you off on a journey here, right, to learn more about what it was you actually saw and where it was shot. So can you describe for us the process and what that entailed? Sure. You know, I found the film, and I didn't know anything about it. Um, I, my grandfather had died before I was born, and my grandmother never shared any details of it. So I was really starting from scratch. But the images are so beautiful, and there's so many children, and, and the, the, the town is so lively that I just I felt this tremendous sense of responsibility to these people as individuals. Um, I mean, we knew that they were Polish Jews before the war, but that's something so general, and they were captured as individuals. And and I wanted to be able to identify who I was looking at. So that um, uh, I embarked on a four-year uh, research journey to try to identify the individuals who appear in the film. And in, as a result, I ended up meeting seven survivors, including two who appear in the film as young people. Um, and that's all detailed in my book, Three Minutes in Poland. Absolutely. And Bianca, so you're a historian and a filmmaker, and you discovered this three minutes film, of uh, film uh, after the Kurtz family had actually donated it to the Holocaust Museum. And I've heard you discuss people who have seen this film explain to you a sense of helplessness and frustration that built with them during watching this. Is that something you're hearing a lot? Yes, because of course, um, when we see this people, we know that the Holocaust was going to happen. They do not know that, so that puts a, a lot of pressure, of course, on these images and makes watching it very emotional still. For me, I think Glenn and me must have watched it both uh, thousands of times, and still it can take your breath away sometimes. Yeah, I mean, as, as we know here, there were 3,000 Jews in that small town. It's reported that only 100 would survive World War II. And so, Glenn, as you mentioned, you found some of these survivors. What was it like to show them this footage? What was their reaction to it? Well, you know, one of the two people who appears in it as a young person, the very first thing that he said to me, literally moments after he'd seen the film for the first time, was, you've given me back my childhood. And I mean, if you think this is a man who lost his family, he lost his town, almost the whole culture disappeared. And so everything that happened before that had this sort of, you know, unreal quality to him. And yet here in these images, he's 13 years old, nothing, nothing terrible has happened yet. And for him, it, it was this sort of bridge back to a time that he had sort of lost the ability to even believe in. And so it restored something to him of his own life. Of course, it can't restore what was lost, but it gave him a sense of connectedness again to this town that, after all, was very meaningful to him. And I had similar responses from other survivors. Of course, it's terribly painful for them to watch, and they see everything that's around the frame while we only see what's in it. But for them, it brings them back into the connectedness of this community. And that was something that we really sought to try and preserve. Absolutely. And Bianca, as we mentioned, historian and a filmmaker that you are, um, what do you want the audience to really learn from this? What is your hope that if an audience sits down and watches this, what's their takeaway? It works like a kind of uh, memorial to me. Um, you remember um, things that maybe you haven't a personal connection to, but because of this film, you get a very 
a personal reaction to the individuals we see in this film. We, get, we made a kind of portraits of everyone who appears in the film. So it's, yeah, it's um, do not forget. Uh, Bianca Sitker and Glenn Kurtz, thank you both so much. Three minutes a lengthening, which again just played at the Sundance Film Festival, will be released in the spring of 2022 from Super LTD. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.